Moi. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So who's happy to be with the body of Christ and in the presence of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Chris. Chris be cool. You just say it like that, Chris be cool. That's better than crispy band, right? When it was Peter and Chris leading, <laughs> they were the crispy band. <laughs> better than the pee pee band when Preeti and Peter were leading. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> that was a mistake I was still never to make again. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Anything to make you guys laugh. You know, you know I love you guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I have lots of thoughts I want to share with you guys, and I even have some notes today. Problem is when I come up here, and it's just like, the, I get, all I can feel is fire, truly. I feel so much, I mean, is it that we've got the heating on too high, or what? <laughs> Seriously. You guys, are you feeling hot? You bandies? There was, a, there was definitely, there is definitely something special up here. Just take a big deep breath, you guys. Just feel the Holy Spirit. Just let him come deep into you. Just feel like you're a sponge. And he's inside of every one of you. Rise up in me, Holy Spirit. Rise up in each of us. Saturate us. We choose you. We choose this moment. We choose to be here with you, feeling you, hearing you, knowing you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Woohoo! So, you guys, you know, the last week, how many of you were just blown away by Manju's message last week? It's amazing how many people told me during this week how they were blessed and how they were able to uh, recall it, you know, specific parts of the message which, which were applicable to their life and how they were just able to live that, you know. So, so I really believe, guys, that the word, when it's, when it's shared, has a power that really enables us. It empower, the word empowers us. Not only to hear it, but to live it and to walk in it. Yeah? So, um, two weeks ago, I was sharing with you guys about, like, we were looking at, okay, what kind of fruit do I want to manifest in 2023? And, um, wow, you know, last week, Manju was having this runny nose when he was up here, and we were like, I was seeing the glistening beads on his, no <laughs> on his nostril, and I was wondering what to do when Mia brought him up. Brought him a tissue and a Kleenex. Thank you. Excuse me. It's that heat of the Holy Spirit. I'm literally feeling it right through me, guys. Like through my, through my um, head and my heart, like all this way. Uh, so Holy Spirit, thank you. I did give him permission to mess, ma mess me up. <laughs> And that worship was so good. And you know, even Friday night, you guys, it was so awesome. I wished we had all been here to enjoy it. We were not. But it was just an amazing time. Just so tangibly awesome in the presence of God. And we had a beautiful time to pray for the nation and everything like that. I think it's just the residue of all of that, which is really good. So fruit for 2023, did anyone have a chance to think about what fruit you want to be manifesting in this year. You know, if you think about it, guys, we're all producing fruit all the time. Yeah? Not consciously, but there is some fruit that's coming out of your life, coming, ma impacting in your, like manifesting in your, in your work life, in your home, in your relationships, in your personal walk with God, in just even in your thoughts and in emotions and that is every decision that you make, yeah? And so when, when you stop and you think, okay, what fruit do I want to be manifesting? It becomes something you realize that you can actually make happen with God. 
right? Because I always say everything inside of here is within my power. It's all something that I, of course, yeah, there are things that happen to us sometimes which, which we didn't have anything to do with, and I completely acknowledge that. But as people with a free will and with the power of God in us, yes, there is so much that you can change. Right, Deborah? Exactly. Hallelujah. So speaking about fruit, you know, I was thinking about this these past few days, and the scripture that came to me, I was actually in my own devotional time, and I was reading from the book of Hebrews, and Hebrews 13 and verse 15 says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Isn't that beautiful? The fruit of our lips, that everything you say and, and speak and sing, and it's actually a manifestation. It's fruit. It's something that's coming forth from something that's growing within you. Right? Fruit never just appears. I mean, I know we go into the store and we pick it up from a counter, or from, a, from a shelf. But fruit actually grew on a tree that was rooted in the ground and that was nurtured and nourished and then brought forth the results of that nurturing and nourishing. So the, the bottom line is, yeah, what am I really nurturing and nourishing? Thank you, sweetie. What am I nurturing and nourishing in my life that's bringing forth fruit? What am I giving strength and power into my life that's, that's causing me to feel afraid, causing me to feel insecure? What is this in my life that's making me afraid of finances or of, you know, guys, truly, for example, if I can, if I can mention Rachel, her, her um, job transition is fruit of something that was happening inside her. Yes? And that's the way it goes, right? It, this year, if you decide that, yeah, this is what I, so you set your goals. You set your sights on what you want to see. I am going to grow stronger in the Lord. I am going to begin to m allow this gifting in my life to develop and grow. And, and I, this is what I will do towards it. And I am going to nurture that thing. I am going to nurture this revelation God has given me. I'm going to nurture my um, my uh, Jesus body here and I'm going to take care of each of us and I'm going to love my friends and, and value them and steward them and treasure them as a gift to me and see how that brings fruit in my life. You know what I mean? And so here in Hebrews it says, um, in fact, if we just go back up um, a verse or two, maybe um, it says, uh, therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify, it's verse 12, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Remember where he was crucified? Outside the city gate. He was crucified on that mountain which was away from, from Jerusalem. Outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For we are here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share with such sacrifices. God is well pleased. See, what is it talking about, guys? The fruit of our lips and then the sacrifices, the, the walk, the things that you, he's saying, don't forget to do good. Because it's not only about the walk. It's not only about the talk. It's about the walk. He's saying do good. I mean, the, the doing of good. And even about, you know, just that mention of the fact that Jesus was sacrificed outside the city gate. You know, sometimes you do have to set yourself apart to live a life of sacrifice for Jesus. And I'm not saying, you know, like, be a nun. That used to be my ambition when I was like nine years old. Um, but, I, but I quickly forgot that. My mother used to say, you're going to be a nun with somebody's son. And, and, sh and she was prophesying because I met Manchu when I was 17 and the rest is history. <laughs> la la. But anyway, um, anyway, 
it, the, this scripture is not talking about you going away and being a nun or anything. It's talking about setting your heart apart, allowing yourself to live a life that's devoted to Jesus in every way. Anyway, that's not the topic of my message, so I'm not going to camp there. But guys, it says, do not forget to do good. You know, offer to God the fruit of your lips, the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of your, our lips, giving thanks to his name. Thanks to God and praise, that heart of gratitude. It is fruit that he's looking for. Have you found when you're really feeling grateful to God how amazing you feel? Have you ever tried it, you guys? I just start that way every morning. And when I feel like I'm getting fe feeling a little, um, a, a little grumpy about anything, I just quickly, consciously switch to feeling grateful. From grumpiness to gratitude, I should write a book. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It just switches everything because suddenly you're acknowledging the grace of God in your life and that he has blessed you and that he is with you, yeah? And so, and so it's a case of identifying with Jesus, guys. So but basically, I really believe for us to bear fruit that's going to be a joy to him, you need to set yourself apart, to, and, and you, we really do need to identify ourselves with him. What does that mean? Does it mean a churchy thing? No, because here's the weird news. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? But, but we have, over, year, over the years, you know, we have kind of shifted that to be the church is the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> but it's Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. I remember reading multiple books, but one specific one about, a, about this lady in Pakistan, you know, never had any influence, which was Jesus-y. And her husband was someone big in the government. And it's called I Dared to Call Him Father. Anyone read it? Yeah? It's so good. Her, her name was Bilkis Sheikh. And she, she just began to have encounters with God. She baptized herself in her bathtub. And, of course, she became, she became a preacher and everything and ministered to people in the persecuted church and later on. But for years, it was just her and God experience. And what about all these amazing Thousands, millions of people in the Middle East who are just having a dream of Jesus and waking up, knowing him, that he's the one they were waiting for. Yeah? And so, guys, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's the one God is calling us to identify with. Yeah? Just by the way. Church is not the way, the only way. Even when you have a church called the way, God bless Pastor Jack Hayford. I'm not going to say rest in peace, by the way. I hate when people say rest in peace. I don't want to rest in peace when I'm gone from this life. I want to be partying <laughs> with, the, with the cool band, the crispy cool band, the heavenly version. <laughs> of course, Chris will still be down here. Right, Chris? So, guys, I want to turn, I want to ask you to turn with me. Well, I hope so. What? <laughs> Crispy girl. <laughs> okay. So, guys, can you turn to Judges chapter 6? We're going to talk about some, somebody who you probably know and about it's, it's Gideon. <laughs> that guy, Gideon. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So ev everyone who's been through Sunday school and everything knows all about Gideon, right, you guys? But, but let's just look at him in a slightly different way today. Uh, Judges chapter 6, let's just look at verse 11. And it says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abiezrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. This reminds me, <laughs> you guys, about this, these people who used to, like this lady whose mother-in-law would walk, walk into the house all the time. <laughs> and so she would, like, she would like do things in hiding. <laughs> like <laughs> She would fix her lunch and stuff and then quickly hide it somewhere else because she didn't want her mother-in-law to come and like, look in the 
in the pots and pans, you know what I mean? So it's Gideon's doing something like that, but there's a reason for that, okay? And when you go to the beginning of the chapter, to verse 1, it says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, so the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. Wah, wah, wah. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. That sounds painful. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made themselves dens, caves, strongholds, which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had so, had, whatever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up, also Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. It sounds like they were having a rough time. And this was going on for years on end. Then they would come, this, like the enemy armies, then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor goat. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. That sounds so crazy, right? That people just come and they destroy stuff just for the sake of it. You know, this past week, I was doing a life coaching session with a young girl, I mean, a teenage girl. And she was she, she's going to this beautiful private school and telling she was telling me how she was being bullied by other kids and hated on. And it was really terrible. And I, I, I couldn't believe that kids, teenagers could be so mean. You know, some of you teenagers probably know what I'm talking about. But like that people could be so mean. And that's what you think about when you see how these guys just, just walked in, you know, into the land and destroyed all their things that they were growing and killed their livestock and their cattle and everything. So mean. And we're told that the people cried out to the Lord. And verse 7, it says, And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. What's the Lord saying to them? He's saying, I gave you guys everything. I gave you guys everything to be a success. And I blessed you and I brought you out of that bad situation you were in into a really good one. And I gave you absolute potential. And all I said to you guys was, don't you, don't you pay homage to the ones who never blessed you, to the, to the one who didn't bring you here, to the one who is not responsible for the goodness in your life, you know? And you never did that. And you know, guys, anyway, I, let's, let's remember that thought because I want to come back to it. Um, and, it, and God says, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now, this all happened, and we're told that here was Gideon, you know, um, working, hiding away in secret, trying to make something for his family. And verse 11 says, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebin tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abazarite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, and see what the angel said to him, you guys. The angel said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. What was Gideon doing? He was hiding away. He was, he was working in secret because he was afraid that these hordes of people would come and just sweep everything away you know, hurt him and attack his, burn down his um, house and his livelihood and everything. And Gideon is just shocked. He says, oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? 
And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Do you think that's a valid question? Yeah? Isn't it a valid question? Here he is going through a really hard time, super oppressed, not having much to, you know, enjoy in his life, living in fear. And this angel comes and tells him what a hero he is. Hey, everyone awake. Let's just lift, put your hand up if it's time, when it's time for another joke. <laughs> but at the moment, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, go I see that hand, okay. <laughs> at the moment, I'm just gonna go with the flow, okay, you guys? Um, and so it's like all these awful things are happening and this man Gideon is feeling completely powerless to change anything, to change his own life situation. You know, it's like I, I, he, couldn't, he couldn't run far enough from the, this thing that was happening. And then this, he hears from heaven, you mighty man of valor. Hey, brave dude, cool dude. And, and he's like, huh? And he says, if you were with us, then why has all this happened to us? Where are all your miracles, which we know you used to do? Didn't you bring us up out of Egypt, that difficult place? But you have forsaken us. And you have allowed our enemies to have victory over us. So just going back, guys, to um, verse 8, where God sent a prophet to the children of Israel and said to them, you know, you guys, I gave you everything. And you, this is a grace message, it is, I promise. <laughs> where the prophet said, you know, you guys, I blessed you with everything. And you just didn't stay true to me. See, guys, it's not that. There may be some, all the time we face situations in life where we wonder like, God, where are you? Like, are you even hearing my prayer? Have you ever been in that place? Yeah? And the thing is, guys, that I really believe that it's like any two adult friends or any two adults who are in relationship, they are with each other through their own free will and through their valid consent. Am I right? And that's how it is with God. That's how it is with... See, I, I, we are parents of an uh, adult son who's a man. And if he chose to leave our lives and, and not be true to how we raised him and he decided to go his own way, is there really something we can do to stop him? No. And guys, the thing about God is he respects our free will. So many people I have spoken to in this past 27 years of ministry, like I've heard people say, okay, then why do I feel this way? Or why am I doing this? Or why, why can't I give this up? Or why? But God has given us a free will, right? And he's so awesome and amazing, guys. He's such a parent that he will never interfere or manipulate our free will. If he did, then everybody would be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Everybody would be just like, we'd all be like, like, like robots just doing whatever God wants us to do. But he has given us a free will. And, and what happens is, if, if, if he, like these people, they decided to, to do their own thing, but they also wanted the blessing in their lives. And the problem is that it doesn't work that way. And it's not that God is a conditional lover. He's not. But he looks at the intents of our hearts. Do we get it wrong? Yes, all the time. But what was your heart? Hmm? And there's always consequences to actions. Right? So, so I'm starting to make everyone feel a little tired, I guess. 
but uh, all good. Um, well, they keep talking, guys, because I can't hear you. I can't see you guys now that these, these lights are so dim. Darn it. <laughs> you guys have to speak to me, okay? Speak to me. <laughs> oh, I may just burst into song. So, guys, like, what do you see here? That, that thank you, Tracity, I sure will. And, and Gideon is just saying, like, but God, why have you forsaken us? Did God give him an answer? Did the angel answer him back? No. The angel didn't say, oh, I'm so sorry you've been going through this rough time, young man. But, but we're, we're told the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. I was just so blown away. You know, guys, when I read this, I've read this scripture. I'm not kidding you, probably this book, because when I first got saved, I would read the entire New Old Testament and the entire New Testament, of course, multiple times. But every day I would read a portion of the Old Testament in the afternoon and the New Testament in the morning. So I got through the Bible super fast. I've read this book of Judges. I can't tell you how many times. And I never really saw this but that the angel of the Lord, or the Lord, as they say, is saying, go in this might of yours. Do you see that? Go in this might of yours. Go in this might of yours. Guys, what has God placed inside of you? What has God placed inside of you, Forrester? Chris, Chastity, Thomas. <laughs> Sherry, Raymond, what has God placed inside of you? That's what you're supposed to be running with. Guys, you have to be you. Just don't become a clone. Just don't become a, a, a church robot. Right? You have to be you. And only you can be a really good you. I have to do me. And you have to do you. And, and what this scripture is showing us, guys, the power and the potential that is inside of you already given to you. Already given to you. Already inside of you. In fact, you know, Prince here, when you walked in and I spoke with you, I just really felt that what the Lord was saying to you is that you have been born for such a time as this. And that there is something huge and powerful he has placed inside of you. And if you acknowledge it and embrace it and nurture the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you, truly that you will live the fulfillment of your name, like Queen Esther, born for such a time as this. That even things that happened in uh, disappointing situations in these past few months, that you will see everything turn around in the power of God, and you will just, I just see you flying, shattering a glass ceiling, and going way beyond any place that you ever thought you could go. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it okay if I pause a moment to release a word as well, another word? Kate, what I see is the mighty hand of God holding you, holding you, and you're in his hand, and he's giving into you, into your hands, what looks like a key, like a silver key. But it's a pen, and it's got the back of a key on it. And, and drawing out what, he, what is already inside of you, what, what we see Gideon being told, go in this might of yours, that, that books have been placed inside of you all encounters, experiences that you are meant to begin to manifest so other people can receive it as well. Has that ever been on your heart to start to write some of your experiences and encounters with God? Yeah. Journals? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when time to publish. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So 
the, the Lord is saying to um, Gideon, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel. He's not saying you might do this. He's not saying it could happen. He's, the condition is you go. The condition is you, you take it. You acknowledge it. You see what's inside of you. You see what I have already put inside of you. And you embrace it and you run with it. And you will see the fullness of my purpose manifested and it's going to be mighty in your life. And not only was he going to receive deliverance for himself, but he was going to be the channel, the source that would bring a blessing to his entire people group. Amen? And, and he's told, have I not sent you? Isn't that amazing, guys? Why do we second guess God? Why do we not receive what he says and run with it? Romans 8, 28 says, right? If God be for us, who can be against us? And we quote it often. Do you really believe it? Do you, you know, that's the other thing, you know, often I feel that we don't, we don't walk in the power of that scripture, you guys, because we're not sure that we believe it. Believe what? Believe that God is for me. If God is for me, who could be against me? But we feel like forces and people and situations and employers and and in-laws and outlaws and uh, spouses and mouses and everybody is, are against us because we don't feel like God is for us. Because if God is for me, then who could be against me? But, but I feel like everyone's against me because I don't really see that God is for me. Do you see what I'm saying? And then... Gideon says in verse 15, Oh my Lord, but how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. Wah, wah, wah. Remember last week, Manju was talking about the imposter syndrome, right? How many times do we feel even a desire to do something for God or for somebody else or to take a, a, a promotion in our workplace or to jump into a new career or to, um, or to step into a new course of studies, you know, something that we had not really thought about before and then you think, oh, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm just not up to it. And of course, yeah, there is a place where you, we need to think about stuff before we jump into them, you know. Jesus also said, like, before you build a house, you know, check to see whether you have all the, uh, you have the, the resources to do it. But what I'm saying is, guys, is there a place inside my heart where I think I'm not up to this? Or I'm not good enough? Or I won't be able to take care of this? Or I won't be able to handle this higher level that God wants to take me to? And that is, that is what that imposter syndrome is about. And we can see it completely displayed here with Gideon. But what did God say back to him? God said, surely I will be with you and you shall, not you might, you may. He said, you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. I see that word, the, those words, one man, and I, and, I, and I see it in multiple ways. It, it could be that God is saying, you guys, you know, uh, how the story panned out later was that he defeated thousands and thousands of people with just 300 men. But, but uh, it could be that those 300 were going to be in one accord and they just work because they were working, manifesting the power of the Holy Spirit, the one spirit. And so like, like we love to say about the one body, the union of the one body, uh, that they were going to manifest um, victory because they were going to be as one body, one man. But I also think, you guys, that when we focus on our union with Jesus Christ, when we see how we really are one with him, that he is in me and I'm in him, 
and therefore there's nothing that is impossible for me because he is in me and I'm in him. And if there's anything that stands in my way, it's standing in his way. And if I have a desire to do this, it's because he has the desire to do this because he's in me and I'm in him. And that as one, as one man, he and I will overcome. As one man, he and I will overcome. You know, right now, I'm just feeling like there's things that we really believe and know is for us, things that we know we want to step into. And, and I just feel it from all sides of this room. But, but we feel that it's like the, the, the barriers are too big to scale, or it's just too much aggravation, or it's too much of a battle, or it's too hard, or I just, I just don't think I can handle this, you know? Too painful for me or for someone else. But God is saying to you that he and you as one man will overcome. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, guys, if you receive that word even now in this collective body, it becomes your portion. You will have victory in Jesus' name. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and so... so um, that's the fourth reassurance that God gives Gideon that he will overcome because he's going to do it in the might and the power of God. Isn't that awesome? Let me just take you, let's fast forward to the book of Romans. Keep, keep a, if you're using a paper Bible, keep your bookmark on. That's kind of out of fashion now, isn't it? paper Bible. Who uses those? I do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, just to, just to illustrate what I'm just talking about here and how, how um, God is able to help Gideon to overcome and you and me, yeah? And Romans 8, verse 20, from, let's read from verse 28 because it's just so awesome. So yummy. <laughs> Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Isn't that awesome? Amen. To those who are, the only condition is to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified. Woohoo! And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? See, can you see the intentionality, you guys? It's not like an angel suddenly popped up in Gideon's life. Just like, it's not like you suddenly randomly happen to be here today, or you randomly happen to run into someone who's able to connect you to a job that's for you. And I, I'm sorry that Mackay is not here today because he asked for a, he, he, took, he said he was looking for a job. And I introduced him to Matt Eastman, who used to come here. And Matt was able to connect him to a new job. He went for the interview, and his work today is already at UPS. Such a thrill, another job testimony. But what I'm trying to say is, guys, there are no coincidences. All God, God incidences, right? And when you read these scriptures, you see the intentionality behind everything that God knew. That that's why we are told in John chapter 15, God says, you did not choose me. I chose you. Yeah? And called you and sent you to bear fruit, fruit that will last. Oh, there's fruit again. <laughs> fruit that will last. Yeah? And, and, he's, and he's saying, he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us some things? 
all things. He foreknew. He predestined you. Nothing that's happening in your life is a surprise to God. Not that he brought it to pass, but he allowed your free will to do, play out. And, and can, my, can the path of my life be different to what it is now? Yes, it can. It totally can. Yeah? Because God has empowered us to choose, to decide, to take steps, to make decisions. Yeah? And so he says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. That sounds really dismal. But all that to say, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, who loves us. So things do get bad sometimes, guys, but you and I have been given the power to be Gideons, to be given the power to overcome. Manju, do you, did you want to mention something? When Manju sits at the edge of his seat, you know he's just going to burst out with a revelation. <laughs> we know the signs because we, he shares his revies with us every day. Thank you, Jesus, for heavy revies. So, guys, I'm just going to go back to Gideon. Um, just bearing in mind this scripture in uh, Romans 28 about the fact that God intends. He intends for us to overcome. He intends for us to be victorious. He intends for us to be successful. Yes? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let me just finish that scripture there. And it says, uh, where was I? Thank you, Lord. Uh, verse 16. Yes, thank you, Julie. So when, when, um, when Gideon is, you know, afraid and worried and concerned and seeing this big picture of this big, big army and thinking that, wow, can I actually do this? God is saying to him, go because I will be doing it with you. And, and you will defeat the enemy. And guys, I really believe he's saying to each one of us today that whatever the challenge that faces us right now, you can do it, child, with me. You can do it. We can do it. We, we are meant to do this. You are meant to do this. Yeah? And you were meant to be a conqueror. You were meant to be an overcomer. Hallelujah. And God says, go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Why? Because I am sending you. Amen? Amen. Woohoo! <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, you know, guys, I really believe each of you here was born for significance. Each of you here was born to achieve, born to fulfill your destiny, born to walk in the fullness of God's word, not live a dumbed down version of who you are. You were meant to be an amazing, powerful, potent you. Not a clone, not another look-alike of somebody else. You were meant to be an explosive, powerful you with the logos, the germ of the word, the, the seed of the word germinating inside of you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And you know what, Daniel and Danida? I don't know. I'm not sure like what you guys do like for work and stuff. I know you've got your hands full <laughs> with three kids. <laughs> but I just see like an entrepreneurial anointing on your life that you guys are going to start something together. 
and it's just going to be, it's just going to take off in an amazing way. It's such a spirit of excellence on you both. Does that ring a bell? Something you guys are thinking of? Well, may it be so, that it just starts great and takes off beautifully and just, like I said to Princia, take, breaks a glass ceiling and ignite, yeah, and that nothing shall stop you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, guys, yeah, that we're just born for greatness, you guys, born for significance, not, not to just jog along, trudge along through life tiredly. Let's decide that 2023 is going to be a year of fulfillment that, you know, I was so thrilled to hear Carl say it's been a great year so far. Yeah? Because every day can be significant. And just think, if we live in that mentality that today I am going to be the best me I can be for Jesus, and I'm going to manifest his glory and his word, and I am going to be that not just for me, but for, for those around me as well. Wow, how powerful. I mean, chastity. Now at George Mason campus, just I'm just so excited thinking of all the younger people that you're going to be uh, even unknowingly imparting life to. So cool. Thank you, Lord. So guys, decide today what will be the fruit of my lips. You know, what you say, what you, what you um, sing and say is just really how you speak to God, how you speak to people. Um, it's very, very powerful. Why? Because it has, it, has the, it has the enabling, it has the power to literally change your, your nervous system, your body. Your health, it's seed. It has a way of creating a realm, an atmosphere. You know, sometimes you see what, you probably wonder why X, Y, Z is happening to me all the time. Guys, watch, look at what you're saying. And of course, then backtrack to what am I thinking? Because my thoughts are manifesting in my words. How different can I make it this year with the fruit of my lips? that I begin to see the power of God manifesting in me, begin to see God working in my life and allow that to flow and allow that to manifest. And I begin to allow him and his word to change my very thoughts. It's crazy. It's so amazing. You know, last week I did my, I did the master level of the life coaching, which was so good. I was so grateful to God. I was able to block off the time to do it. But you guys, it was all about neuroscience and and how it affects our lives. It was just amazing. I was just so blown away, mystified by how God has done things that just uh, are activated by his word. And so when you speak certain things, there are certain hormones that are activated in your body, in your brain. Things begin to realign. You know, our words can attract angels and not angels, <laughs> right? Our, our realm can be affected by how we feel and how we speak, how we think and how we speak. So how much more important, guys, if we're coming back to that thing about the fruit of our lips, to live a life that's thankful, that's focused on God, that's allowing him entry and access and flow through our lives. Amen? Do you think today you could decide for the rest of this year or even for the rest of this month, I'm going to cultivate good fruit from my lips, good fruit from my heart. I am going to imbibe enough of God that I will be able to live in victory. Yeah? Yes? A body awake. Yes, that's so true. Not, not close off all possibilities. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not sure who it is, but there's some minister who often says um, where, maybe it's Kirby, I'm not sure, where your attention goes, your energy flows. Yeah? And that's true, right? You just think about your hands sometimes and you can feel uh, energy rushing into your hands, like if, you, if you're just focusing on that hand. And it's like that, like, so how, how much more that you will be manifesting the power of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit into everything you think about and you speak about. Yeah? 
just, just for an exercise, just place your hand on your heart for a moment. Take a big, deep breath and just feel that breath in your heart and just think about your heart. Just how much your heart does for your body and no sleepy. <laughs> big, deep breath. Don't you really feel your heart? I mean, not just the beating and stuff, but don't you just really feel like you become conscious of your heart? Yeah? Good job, guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift up our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. God, we just seal this word under the power of your blood. We seal this word in the power of your presence, Holy Spirit. Let the fire of God seal this word into our hearts and let it begin to manifest. Today we choose. We choose you, Lord. We choose your way. We choose to manifest the fruit of our lips that comes forth from you. And we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we give you, we share that driving seat with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen you guys. I just bless this word into you, into your body, into your spirit, into your soul, into your week. Just go and manifest it. Let Holy Spirit flow through your life. It's going to be a week of healing. Just know that. I feel it. And before I forget, did anyone come in here with any kind of pain? Can you check to see that it's gone? Because this morning when I was in worship and prayer, I really felt God was showing me like there was going to be an angel of healing who was going to um, spontaneously be touching and taking pain away from us. And I, during just as I began to share the word, I was feeling someone's abdominal pain which hopefully has gone now. Anybody who was having pain in their stomach? Anybody who was having pain when you came in? It's gone? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll have to come up here and dance and show us. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, that's good. You guys were good anyways. And what about you, Anjali? Knees okay? Yeah. Good. Amen. Hallelujah. So you guys, you have a blessed week. Just have a blessed week. I'm calling forth your blessed week today. A good one. Yeah? With good fruit and great joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.